In the United States of America, there are two criminal justice systems, one that exists on television and the other that prosecutes and incarcerates real people. If you look at the TV shows, some of the cop shows are very good and they're very compelling drama, but they're basically about murder, rape, and robbery. Now, murder, rape, and robbery are not the most common crime. We're here on a murder investigation. You're under arrest for the murder of Jody Watson. You're under arrest for sexual assault. You're under arrest for murder. Well, based on the entry wound, they were both murdered, but here's where it gets fun. Fact is that uh, violent crime is actually the smallest percentage of all crime. Most offenders were arrested for property crimes and for drug and drug-related offenses. And I think the average person watching television would tend to conclude that violent crime is becoming more and more of a problem. And I think the consequence of that is that many states, although they're fairly bankrupt, are spending a lot more on prisons in order to be safe against violent crime. Mr. Gruber, I have bent over backward to give your clients second, third, and fourth chances. Our sentencing system is very much skewed because of mandatory minimums. Mandatory minimums means that you're taking the discretion away from the judge. There have been times in which I've, I've known of judges, federal, state, are literally in tears because they know that this sentence is inappropriate. And so they would apologize to people, but as they're sending them to prison for 10 years, they know full well it really shouldn't even be a prison sentence or maybe one or two years, but they have to follow the law. Murder two, 15 to life to a term of 15 years. 25 years to life. People don't understand that the length of our sentences is just tremendously disproportionate. The average sentence that Americans receive on being convicted for a crime is twice as long as people in England, three times as long as people in Canada, four times as long as the Dutch, and five to 10 times as long as the French. This can be very well for you. What are you doing, Detective? What are you doing talking to my client without me present? You sneaky Pete. Detective? Interview's over. I have no problem answering questions. Don't say another word. The idea that most people have, uh, rich and famous attorneys with unlimited funds and unlimited resources, again, is, is very far from the truth. So the system is hugely uh, balanced in favor of people with money. Most folks who are charged with criminal offenses don't have those types of resources. And oftentimes, if they are represented by court-appointed counsel, counsel doesn't have those types of resources available to them. Yeah, there's, there's no question but that the public defense bar uh, throughout the country is underfunded. So the ability to vote the time and the resources that are needed, um, especially in the field of indigent defense, is very difficult. It is a form of injustice. You reached a verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Kenneth Jackson, guilty as charged. We find the defendant guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Not guilty. Um, what's good TV? Good TV is seeing a trial. Probably about 5% or less of cases actually go to trial. Prosecutors uh, in this country uh, have uh, a tremendous amount of leverage over defendants. Many defendants are, are told that if they choose to not accept a, a plea bargain, they'll face additional charges or more serious charges. Neither the defense bar nor the prosecutor advises the uh, defendant about the potential consequences. The felony conviction that restricts your ability to seek meaningful employment. You might lose your right to vote. You have to show the public you go after the rich. Your client killed in cold blood. I don't care if he's homeless or owns Grand Central Station. I want to believe in justice. The reality is that justice is not blind. Black people are far more likely, 10 times as likely to be arrested, more likely to be prosecuted, more likely to be convicted, and more likely to be sentenced than white people. I began to see who we were targeting, who we were going after. I would notice that most of the time was always appeared to be urban areas. Use of drugs cuts across all ethnic and economic lines, but the people that get sent to prison for them are grossly disproportionately lower income people and people of color. Uh, if we was locking up everybody, white and black, for the same thing, they would have said, let's stop this craziness, because you're not putting my son in jail. The injustice is to society at large. That's the, the, the true tragedy of it. 